There is always a language that you can translate this into that will placate behaviorists, logical positivists, and other people who want to insist fundamentally that the universe is doubt, 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 doubt. You see, that's what lies behind all these mythologies. The person who wants to say on the one hand that the universe is something that strikes him as profoundly mysterious, profoundly mysterious, will talk about the Godhead and uh, things behind it. The person, who, on the other hand, who wants to say, oh, well, it's just... It's just a thing that's not really very important. He'll find a language so as to describe the universe in a slightly contemptuous way. He'll say it's nothing but. It's nothing but. And neither of these people can prove that what they say is true. They're just two different ways of expressing the kind of person you are. Or what role you're playing with respect to life. See, a lot of people want to advertise the fact that they are sound and reliable. And nobody can put over any nonsense on them. They're tough-minded. So in the academic world, they'll always play a certain role. You can watch it. You know exactly what it is, how they come on. Other people want to say to those people, you're dry as bones, you rattle. You know the words, but you don't know the music. You see, all, really, all these people really are differentiated between two schools of thought. The prickly people and the gooey people. And on the side of goo, we have the romanticists. And on the side of prickles, the classicists. In medieval times, on the side of goo, we had people who were then called realists. And on the side of prickles, the people who were called nominalists. Now, realists believed that every man, individual person, was an example of an essence called mankind. The realists said, that's a lot of nonsense. There are only particular people. There is no such essence called mankind. And today, uh, the logical positivists and behaviorists are examples of prickly people and uh, mystics and... Uh, uh, idealists, in the Berkeleyan sense, are examples of gooey people. And uh, this is an eternal debate. When you examine any substance closely, you find structure. But when your lens gets out of focus, you find substance or goo because you can't see the details. So it is all homogeneous, like homogenized milk. So depending on the level of magnification with which you look at life, you see prickles, or structure, and goo, or stuff. And all philosophical debates go along between these people. Whereas the truth of the matter is, of course, that life is gooey prickles and prickly goo. <laughs> Now, don't get taken in by being too prickly. This is the thing that in our academic world today, in considering what its fashions are, is the besetting temptation. The to secure oneself as an honest and respectable academician who is of sound scientific approach. People who ought not to be so prickly because they're dealing with things in which there are infinitely many variables put on the idea that they know what all the prickles in this psychological situation are and we just don't. You have to get a bit gooey and don't be ashamed of it.